let's say we have a linear first order differential equation and we're trying to solve for y as a function of t and the first step in solving this is making sure that the equation is in the correct initial form which is a linear combination in the form the derivative of y plus the coefficient of y which is a continuous function of t and we will call it p of t times y and all of that will be equal to a continuous function that we will call q of t and once you have your equation in this form the next step is finding the integrating factor which is a special function that we will call here i of t and we will come back to the step and find what that function is but for now all you need to know is that there is a function called the integrating factor and when you take its derivative you actually get the function itself times the coefficient of y in the equation which in this case is p of t and so we'll come back to the step and explain what this function is but for now let's pretend we have found the integrating factor and move on to the next step which is to multiply the entire equation with this special function and when you do that you get the integrating factor that we called i of t times the derivative of y plus i of t times p of t times y and all of that will be equal to i of t times q of t now remember in step two we said that the derivative of the integrating factor that we called i of t is equal to i of t times p of t which is exactly what we have here as the coefficient of y so we can replace that part of the equation with the derivative of i so we will get i of t times the derivative of y plus the derivative of i of t times y and that would be equal to i of t times q of t and what we have here on the left side of the equation is the product rule in terms of i of t and y so that can be rewritten as the derivative of i of t times y and that will be equal to i of t times q of t so now to get rid of this derivative you would have to integrate both sides and when you do that you get on the left side just i of t times y plus the constant of integration and that will be equal to the integral of i of t times q of t dt and once you have it in this form the last step is to do some algebra to solve for y and so the first thing you do is subtract the constant from both sides so you will get i of t times y is equal to the integral of i of t times q of t dt minus c and finally you can divide both sides by the integrating factor to solve for y so y will be equal to the integral of i of t times q of t dt minus c and all of that will be divided by i of t and this is a formula for the general solution of a linear first order differential equation but to make 
things even easier. Conventionally, we will absorb this minus sign that's behind the unknown constant C into the constant. So basically what we're saying is because it's easier to deal with addition than subtraction, saying plus negative C is the same thing as saying minus C. And because we know that the C is an unknown constant, well, the minus C is also an unknown constant. And we can refer to that as C. So we're basically saying that C is equal to minus C. And because of that, we can change this sign from minus into plus, And that will not affect the final solution of the equation. Now we have our formula for the general solution, but we have yet to figure out this function, the integrating factor that we called i of t is. All we know about this function so far is that when you take its derivative, it's equal to the function itself times p of t, which was the coefficient of our equation when it was in its initial form. So now let's get i of t and its derivative on the same side by dividing i of t from both sides. And that will give you the derivative of i of t over i of t. And that will equal p of t. When you have a derivative of some function over the function itself, that is the same thing as the derivative of the natural log of that function. So the left side of this could be rewritten as the derivative of the natural log of i of t. And that will be equal to p of t. So now the next step in solving for i of t would be to integrate both sides. And when you do that, the derivative cancels on the left. So you will get the natural log of i of t plus the integrating uh, constant, which because we used c in the formula for the general solution, we'll use d for this one. And that will equal the integral of p of t dt. And now we'll subtract the constant from both sides and you'll get the natural log of i of t on the left side. And on the right side, you'll get the integral of p of t dt. But instead of minus d, we're going to do the same thing we did with the constant and the formula for the general solution, which is absorbing that minus sign into the constant. So we'll make this plus d. And now we have to get rid of this natural log. So we will exponentiate both sides. So when you do that, on the left side, you'll just be left with i of t. And on the right side, you have e raised to the integral of p of t dt plus d. So now that we have our formulas for both the integrating factor and our general solution, we can substitute an i of t in our general solution. But if we do it at this point, then that would leave us with not one, but two constants that are unknown in our final solution, c and d. So to avoid that, we have to do something. And we'll start with the integrating factor. We can rewrite it as e raised to the power of the constant d times e raised to the integral of p of t dt. And the reason why this works is because if you have some base b raised to some exponent a times 
the same base raised to another exponent c, then that's the same thing as that same base raised to the sum of those exponents. So now because d is an unknown constant, that means e raised to the power of d is also an unknown constant. So we can refer to that as the unknown constant d. So we can replace that with just d. So it would be d times e raised to the power of the integral of p t dt. And now we can substitute this in for i of t in our general solution. And you will get y of t is equal to the integral of d times e raised to the integral of p of t dt times q of t dt plus c over d times e raised to the integral of p of t dt. The integral of a constant times a function is the same thing as that constant times the integral of that function. So we can take this d out and when you do that you get y of t is equal to d times the integral of e raised to the integral of p of t dt times q of t dt plus c over over d times e raised to the integral of p of t dt. We can split this into the sum of two fractions so we can have a better understanding of what to do next. So we can have y of t is equal to d times the integral of e raised to the power of the integral of p of t dt times q of t over d times e raised to the integral of p of t dt plus c over d times e raised to the integral of p of t dt. And so now these d's cancel out and this c can be rewritten as c over d over e raised to the power of the integral of p of t dt. And the reason why we're doing that is to get these two unknown constants together. And so we can then join the fractions again. So you'll get, finally you'll get y of t is equal to the integral of e raised to the integral of p of t dt times q of t plus c over d and all of that over e raised to the integral of p of t dt. And now because we know that c is an unknown constant and d is also an unknown constant, then c over d is also an unknown constant. So we can call that unknown constant c. So in other words, we're saying c is equal to c over d. So we can replace this with c. 
So the final solution, our general solution for the linear first order differential equation is y of t is equal to the integral of e raised to the integral of p of t dt times q of t plus c over e raised to the power of the integral of p of t dt and there you have it this is the final formula for the general solution of a linear first order differential equation